Depending on how much you've been paying attention to the news recently, the title of this video might cause some confusion. Qualcomm has development boards for AI in IoT, and I can buy them for less than $10,000? In today's video, I'll tell you about the Qualcomm's recent push into AIoT and its Dragonwing brand, including the latest big surprise, Arduino on a keyboard all in less than 500 seconds. Let's actually start with that last one, the Arduino Uno Q, introduced just this week at From Blink to Think event by Arduino. The board is built around Qualcomm Dragonwing RB2210 processor with Adreno GPU that can be used for accelerating AI inference. There are two different versions, one with 2GB of RAM and 16GB of onboard AMC storage, the other one which is not available yet with 4GB of RAM and 32GB of onboard AMC storage. All come in the form factor of the same old Arduino Uno, with the same pins, which is very important, so you can use the old shields. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth interfaces are also present, together with LED matrix to perform some blink blink. Plus, there is an onboard MCU from ST Electronics for real-time control. Considering the price tag of around 44 USD, depending on the country, these are some great specs for the product from Arduino. You should have no trouble running most of AI applications that you might need in robotics or IoT areas. I'm talking about the things like object detection, speech or image recognition, and so on. For generative AI, this thing is a little bit tight, since there are only 2 gigabytes of RAM available. Theoretically, we should be able to run smaller language models with parameter counts of around 1 billion if properly quantized. But this is not much, so this is not meant exactly for generative AI applications. By the way, what is Dragonwing exactly? In very simple words, Dragonwing is a new brand from Qualcomm, a part of company's push into automotive, IoT, and in general becoming more developer-friendly. Before it was only the Snapdragon, which was, and still is, used in mobile phones and very recently laptops. The whole Dragonwing transformation unveiled this year at Mobile World Congress and Embedded World is the reason why you're seeing the boards like Arduino Uno Q and others. By the way, for this video, I'm intentionally staying away from the drama and politics around the Qualcomm acquiring Arduino. If you have any thoughts, let's discuss in the comments section. For other boards that are available for the regular developer, there are RB1, RB3 Gen 2, Rubik Spy, Tachyon, and Airbox Q900. RB1 and RB3 Gen 2 and some other RB boards are made by Thundercom and more representative of the Qualcomm hardware before pivot to developers. Very weird looking, pricey and until recently not easy at all to get started. Thanks to official Ubuntu images and some work done by Edge Impulse, they became a bit more user-friendly. The amount of processing power increases in series, with RB1 built around the same chip as Arduino Uno Q and being the least powerful. RB3, this board, is based on either 6490 or 5430, depending on the version, regular or light. 6490 has 12 tops NPU, while 5430 does not. If you want 6490 processor and the NPU, but for cheaper and in a bit more standard packaging, there is Rubik's Pi. It's not exactly the same form factor as Raspberry Pi, but it has compatible 40-pin header and a bunch of useful interfaces, coupled with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of onboard storage, which is plenty. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even M2 key M connector. Tachyon from Particle looks much more like Raspberry Pi and comes with a twist. Built-in 5G connectivity. It has the same 6490 processor inside as Rubik's Pi, so the specs are similar. The board is more expensive than Rubik's Pi, 
with the price starting from 249 USD for the version with 4 GB of RAM. But the no hassle 5G connectivity is really worth it if your project needs it. It had a very successful Kickstarter campaign, so probably more people found it useful than not. I got a unit for myself too, and I will tell you more about it in future videos. Last but not least, there is IQ9075, which is a compute juggernaut, theoretically matching NVIDIA Jetson AGX or in raw compute at 200 tops combined. There is an EVK or evaluation kit available, but it is very hard to come by at the moment because it's a very new board. The same chip though can be found in Ratsa Airbox Q900. Inside the rugged case you can find the octa-core CPU with a clock of up to 2 0.36 GHz, Adrena 663 GPU, dual hexagon NPUs with 26 GB of RAM and 128 GB of onboard storage, plus the possibility of expanding the storage with NVMe drive. What can you do with such compute power? If running visual intelligence models, you can process around 32 streams simultaneously. Quite obviously, you can use it for generative AI too, with LLMs and VLMs running on an NPU. I already checked that for you. Another reason I'm mentioning Ratsa product is because, to my knowledge, the price for it is quite a bit cheaper than for official EVK, although it's not that cheap. Around 600 USD. Still. Compared to NVIDIA AGX O-Ring, it's a steal. Will this pivot to developers and IoT be successful for Qualcomm? No one can predict the future, least of all software engineers. What I am sure is that this video will need an update in near future, since there might be more development boards with the Qualcomm chips, both from Arduino and other companies. Subscribe to stay updated, and until the next time.